Hi, I'm Oscar from the Dog Spotters, and I'm sitting here with the director of the documentary I Shall Not Hate, Tal Bada. She has traveled all the way from Tel Aviv here to Dog Leipzig, and her highly emotional film is based on the biography of the protagonist Dr. Abu Laesh from Palestine, and therefore tells the story of the death of his three beloved daughters killed by the Israeli army and his striving against hate. Thank you for being here. Thank you. In your film, you tell the story of Dr. Abu Laesh. Why did you decide to make a film about him and how did you meet? Um, okay, so first I, I think I saw him on Israeli TV um, and I, um, he was talking about uh, hatred and the fact that you know, he doesn't have uh, any revenge towards what happened to his daughters. And, and I felt that I really wanted to know more about him. And as an Israeli living in Israel, I feel always there is, um, there is a general thought of it's or us or them. And, and this very kind of notion of black and white is um, something that we grow up with. And, and I feel that like my film is basically about blindness and the fact that we need to see each other in, our, in the eyes and um, understand that everybody's human beings and, and not enemies to each other. So that's why I wanted to do that film. Um, and I went over to um, Toronto to meet him, but it took a lot of time to convince him and have you know hit him trust me and the process. Um, but yeah, so, so that's why it took a, a few years to make the film. Okay. So you answered a lot of my questions already, <laughs> Sorry. but to be honest, yeah. I was very crushed after watching the movie yesterday. And I wanted to ask you, how did you get through that as the director? And when you spent several years on it, instead of just 92 minutes, how did that affect you? Yeah. Um, so first of all, it was very difficult emotionally to do this film for me also. Um, I feel a lot of times I would cry during like the interviews, when we interviewed his daughters, um, when, when he would tell me his story, it was very difficult for me. And everybody w around would cry, the men and the women, it doesn't really matter. Um, but I think that for me, what always led me is the fact that there is the tragedy and there is the past, but he's thinking towards the future. And, and for me, that gave me a lot of inspiration, thinking like, okay, let's move through this difficult moment, but, um, but know that someone wants a different future for himself, for others, for his neighbors. As you said, the movie was very emotional. And so I wanted to ask you, how did you find a balance between this emotional part and the political part behind it? Mm -hmm. um, I prefer emotional and political. Um, for me, the political is very difficult. Also, we had a lot of moments when we were making this film of trying to understand how do we tell the history of Gaza and Israel and the conflict. And the, we, we got mixed up and we got confused always, like what is the right way? And, and I felt all the time there was this motivation and desire to create like a story that is balanced. If we say something about the Palestinians, so what can we say about the Israelis? And at that moment, we understood that it's just going to be a, a mess if we do that way. And therefore, I decided as a director that I wanted to focus on his point of view. And it meant that from the beginning, it's not a balanced story. I didn't, I'm not here to tell a balanced story about Israeli and Palestinian history. I came to tell the story of one character who went through a very difficult life and despite all that he doesn't want uh, to hate um, his enemy or the perpetrator. After the events of a year ago um, you were still making the movie and have you considered maybe changing the way you tell the story after these ev events that happened a year ago? Um, well so first of all most of the film, the film was almost done before October 7th. And actually, on September 30th, one week before, we had a screening of like a rough cut of the film at the World Peace Forum in Normandy in France. With, I was there and Dr. Abuelish was there and many others were there. And we had like 2,000 people and we screened the film. And then one week after, October 7th comes and I thought to myself, okay, my film is to the garbage. Like I'm not gonna screen it again. But then I had a call with Dr. Abuelish and I tried to understand like where does he stand now? Many of his 
family were killed even after October 7th. And when he talked to me and said, I feel that no matter how many people that will be killed, everybody would need to sit down at a table and talk to each other. So I still believe in what I said before, that there's no other solution than negotiations and, and, and trying to find a peace agreement. And that's when we decided to come out with the film. But I knew I wanted to add something, so I decided to add the epilogue at the end of like five minutes. We tried to bring this message like, this is a disaster, but we need to rise from this disaster and, and call for our leaders to take you know, risks and, and to bring a different future for the Israelis and Palestinians. So, how does it feel to make an entire movie theater cry with such an emotional film? Uh, and is that, a is that a typical reaction or have you experienced different? No, everybody cries. Um, and I feel that um, it's not possible not to because uh, it's, it's a very difficult film. I feel that maybe it's the most emotional film I did and most difficult. I don't know if I'll ever do fil a film like this anymore <laughs> after this. I feel like I want to do a funny film. My next film should have a lot of humor in it. But um, yeah, I mean, everybody comes out crying. I do hope that they also come out with a little bit of thinking of like how inspiring this doctor is and how it's meaningful to go through a tragic moment and try and find the light after that. So yeah. And have you experienced other reactions in different screenings, yeah, like maybe bad reactions to the movie? Yeah, yeah. First of all, in general, it's very difficult to screen this film in the context of events that are happening. Um, I feel that um, in all the screenings, um, there are also people that are critical towards my point of view as an Israeli doing this film about Palestinian. And also when I'm with the doctor in the screenings, he also gets criticized from Palestinians that he is not critical enough towards the leadership in Palestine. So it's always not easy. I mean, I had very difficult reactions for me um, that also led me kind of um, sit back and wait till for screening in Israel because I feel that it's very tense to screen it there. Did you have any discussions with Dr. Abdul Esh about how to make this film or how to tell a story? Um, yes, we, he was involved. I know that a lot of times when we make documentaries, we kind of don't involve the protagonist or we only screen them a uh, rough cut at the end. Here it was a little bit different because it's very um, politically sensitive. And I have also felt that his trust is also to feel in the process that he's seen. Um, and therefore he did see, I would say, each few months he did see some scenes and and also at the end um, he did also see the film and of course after October 7 and I would say there were some moments that I would want to have in the film but we felt I felt that it would be difficult for him to because he still has family in Gaza and it's not easy uh, some of the things that take place there. So I needed to kind of a little bit, a little bit um, take out a few things and stuff like that. So, because at the end, you know, it's not a fiction film with actors, it's real people and it's real danger. And we need to be very, very sensitive when we make these type of stories. What challenges did you face during filming, especially in relation to the border situation and your own security? Mm. Um, so first of all, I didn't uh, film uh, in, uh, in Gaza myself. Um, there was a crew um, that was filming in Gaza. I couldn't go in. The crew couldn't talk to me directly as an Israeli because they're, they're in Gaza and they were afraid of Hamas. So they needed to call me through a different line and we used to speak in French. And it was very complicated um, to do that. Um, and also, yeah, going to the border and filming at the border um, at night, um, these were some dangers that I put myself, but I mean, I like uh, being in dangerous situations. That's part of my, <laughs> my thing. Thank you for taking your time to do this interview with us. The film was very inspirational, but also eye-opening. 
and change the way we see war and its casualties. So thank you. Thank you. Thank That's you very it. much. <laughs>